Hello everybody. So today we are going to do uh, the first part of our biochemistry review. And so you might be thinking, well, why are we going over chemistry stuff um, if this is anatomy? So the first thing I want to say is that the basis for anatomy starts with chemistry. Okay, so the why. Why are we doing this? So life is just a series of chemical reactions. So life is chemistry. Therefore, the principles, so the basis of anatomy, is chemistry. And a lot of the stuff that we are going to go over, you've already seen before, either in your biology class or your chemistry class or IPC. So it should be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. <clears throat> the first thing that I want to go over is water. So water is very, very important. We know that we need water to live, okay, but why is water so important? Okay, so first of all, it is the most abundant substance in your body. So you hear a lot of percentages of like, you know, your 60% water, 70% water. There's not like a, you know, 100% this is the amount of water you have in your body at all times. But a good kind of average is about two-thirds. Okay, so somewhere between 60 and 75%. Uh, so it's about two-thirds of body mass. You may have heard that you can, you know, you can go a long time without food, but you can't go very long without water, and that is very, very true. <clears throat> so why is water so important? One of the reasons is because water has polarity. Uh, you can think about it kind of like the north and south poles, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, positive, negative kind of thing. Polarity. All right, so we're going to draw a little water molecule here. So we're going to start with a big circle, and that's going to be our oxygen. And we know that water is H2O. So we have one oxygen, two hydrogens. And this configuration, this shape, is very important because it does give water a charge, or two charges, actually. So closer to the oxygen, water is going to be more negatively charged, and towards the hydrogen is going to be positive. So you have the negative this direction, and we have the positive in this direction. And so the structure of water gives it some very unique properties that you uh, need to be familiar with. The first one that's very important is that water has a really large heat capacity. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that water can remain at a relatively constant uh, temperature. So that's kind of my about, um, at about constant temperature, even as you gain or lose energy. Okay, and you can kind of see this, um, for example, when you get really hot and you start to sweat and eventually you start cooling off so that water is evaporating off of your body. Okay, uh, when that water starts to evaporate, it takes that heat uh, with it. Okay, <clears throat> but because you have a lot of water in your body still, you're not drastically changing your own body temperature. You're not cooling down and becoming, you know, 80 degrees body temperature. You stay relatively constant. All right, another really important thing about water is that it is an excellent solvent. You hopefully have heard of this word before. Um, its ability to dissolve things, and that is because, so that's a little shortcut for because, of its polarity. So it's partial positive and negative. 
Okay, so an example of this is going to be salt, sodium chloride. So sodium chloride, um, this is no sodium and chloride. Sodium's uh, positively charged and chloride is negatively. That's why, you know, they kind of get together. But when you expose it to water, <clears throat> water is going to help dissolve this and it's going to attract the sodium towards its negative side. So it's going to come over here and hang out with the oxygen. <clears throat> and you have the hydrogens on the opposite side because this side is a little bit positive and this is negative. So you're going to have positives with negatives and then your positive uh, hydrogens are going to be on the other side. And then your chloride is going to be hanging out closer to this side over here. Okay, so water has positive negative charge, has high heat capacity, and it is also a excellent solvent. And the last thing uh, that we're going to go over for water is that it also has a small role in pH. So you have a lot of water throughout your body and it's going to be interacting with different things and so depending on what compound it interacts with it's going to impact your pH a little bit. So small role in pH depending depending on what compound it interacts with and how or in the level that it can dissociate stuff. Dissociate. All right, so for example, if you have hydrochloric acid and water, it's going to disassociate that acid a lot. So your pH is going to become very acidic um, as opposed to other like weaker acids as bases uh, water's not going to disassociate it as much so it's not going to have that much of an impact okay and just a little review um, you have your pH scale you start at zero you go all the way to 14 then you have seven as your neutral and this is going to be like water the closer you go to 14, you're going to be a base. And the closer you get to zero, you're going to be an acid. So hopefully you kind of remember that a little bit. Okay, so we're moving on from water. And we're going to go into biomolecules. And I went ahead and already made this uh, kind of graphic organizer. I just really like. Um, really like doing it like this just because you can kind of see all the types of biomolecules in kind of a snapshot. Um, okay, so the first thing that you need to know about biomolecules is that they are organic. And I'm not, not talking about like organic vegetables. Organic is something that we use to describe things that are carbon based. So they have to have carbon in them. <clears throat> All right, and then the neat thing about biomolecules is that they are produced by living organisms. You can have other organic things that are not produced by living organisms, but my biomolecules have to be. Okay. Well, that's kind of their how they're categorized. <clears throat> All right, so the first one that we are going to go over is going to be carbs or carbohydrates. All right. <clears throat> All right, so first, other names, other things that this is known as. So AKA, also known as, this is going to be your sugars or saccharides. And its purpose is that this is going to store and release energy uh, quickly. So this is like your quick access of energy. 
And some of the more common forms or some examples that you're probably a little uh, more familiar with is going to be things like your glucose, um, lactose, fructose, you've probably heard of those, and your glycogen. Gly glycogen. <clears throat> All right, the next category of biomolecules is going to be your lipids, right? And lipids are also known as, so AKA, are fats or oils. And lipids are also going to store energy. Uh, in, usually in fat cells or, or adipose. But they're also going to be um, responsible for your cell membrane. And we'll go into cell membrane a little bit more later on. And its role with the cell membrane, um, one of them is known as phospholipids. Phospholipids. And it's also going to be responsible for uh, steroids that you find throughout your body. <clears throat> All right, next one is going to be your proteins. So proteins are also known as your polypeptides. Proteins are made uh, from something known as amino acids. And there's about 20 to start off with. Okay. Something really unique about proteins is that this is the most diverse group. It has lots and lots of different functions. Okay. It's going to help um, in the cell membrane. It's going to help build structures like your muscle protein, for example. I'm going to put muscles as an example on here. Um, they're going to help carry out metabolic, metabolic uh, reactions. So this is how I abbreviate reactions. <clears throat> and it's going to do this with something known as enzymes, which we will talk about on the next lesson. And it's also going to help defend your body. Through either proteins that identify your cells as self or proteins that it uses to, um, you know, get rid of pathogens or things that make you sick, things that shouldn't be in your body. And we'll go over that when we get to the immune system. But your proteins are very, very diverse. They have a lot of different functions and all with just a couple amino acids that you have. It's just depending on the, um, the length of the protein as well as the, um, the order of those amino acids that give it their individual jobs. Okay. All right, and then the last type of biomolecule that we are going to go over is going to be the nucleic acids. All right, so the major function, or one of the major functions, is that it carries information. So it carries information, and it's going to do that through DNA and RNA, which hopefully rings a bell. And this is also known as your, or it's also going to play a role in your energy currency. And currency is like your money. Okay? The world revolves around or works with money, just like your body. <clears throat> energy uh, currency of your body and that is in the form of ATP which is very very important and I'm sure you have heard of that. All right and the last thing I want to do is go over a couple things a couple reminders about energy and ATP. So ATP is the overall goal of cellular respiration. You probably went over this whenever you talked about like uh, photosynthesis and 
uh, the mitochondria and stuff like that. So I just want to revisit that a little bit. Okay, so cellular respiration. So I'm going to abbreviate it like this. This is a metabolic reaction. And this is going to be in your mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, and the purpose of this uh, process, cellular respiration, is to convert biochemical energy, okay, or like a biomolecule, such as glucose. So glucose would be a carbohydrate, which is sugar, and it's going to convert it into ATP. Or your energy currency. All right. And there are two categories um, or two types of reactions uh, for cellular respiration, two categories slash reactions. <clears throat> Reaction type, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to just do like a little T chart real quick just so they can kind of compare and contrast both of them. So the first one is going to be an aerobic or aerobic respiration. And the big thing about this is that it requires oxygen. Okay. And because it uses oxygen, this is going to be the most efficient. And it makes about 36 ATP. The other type of cellular respiration is going to be your anaerobic. That an part tells you that it's uh, like no, so no oxygen. So anaerobic respiration. So this is no O2 needed. It might be present or not, but it doesn't use oxygen. Okay, this one's not going to be as efficient. It only makes about two ATP total. Okay, and an example of this that you might be familiar with is lactic acid fermentation. So let's say you're working out really, really hard. Um, you know, eventually your muscles start to run out of oxygen, and so they have to start doing lactic acid fermentation. Um, and so you've heard of like lactic acid buildup, which is what one of the reasons why you end up sore is because there's a buildup of that acid because your muscles had to resort to this type of cellular respiration. Okay. All right. So that is this first part of the review for um, a couple of biochemistry things that you should already be somewhat familiar with, but it may have been a little bit since you've heard of them. Uh, so that's it. Just let me know if you have any other questions.